Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to my Friday message. Today, my focus is on news you can use, and there's some really important programming coming up. Next week, as part of our monthly COVID-19 research seminar series, don't miss Duke immunologist Georgia Tamaris and pediatric epidemiologist Emily D'Agostino, who will speak February 16th at 4 p.m. You can find the Zoom link and more information on the web, and here's the URL. Also beginning next week, the Department of Psychiatry and Behavioral Sciences will launch a very important six-part mental health webinar series entitled, Taking Care of Yourself and Your Loved Ones. The series begins next Wednesday, February 17th, and runs through April 27th. These 30-minute webinars are open to all Duke University and Duke Health community members and their families. I know this past year has been extremely challenging for all of us. These webinars will provide advice about important topics like substance misuse, suicide prevention, and mental health for children, adolescents, and teens. You can find important information at the URL seen here. Now for COVID updates. The good news is there continues to be a steady decline in the number of COVID cases nationally, as well as in North Carolina, although there are still some rural counties still in seeing an increase in cases. At Duke Health, the number of hospitalized COVID patients continues to trend down at about 160, and our COVID positivity rate is 7%, while the state's is still at 8%. There's also been a decrease in cases among students, faculty, and staff in recent weeks. Currently, there are 30 faculty and staff and 55 students who are active positive cases. And since January 3rd, more than 111,000 COVID tests have been administered through Duke's surveillance program with a total of 352 positive for a positivity rate of 0.31%. That being said, Numbers while trending are still well above early fall, and there continues to be concern regarding the circulation of new, more infectious variants of COVID. So continued adherence to our safety practices of masking, distancing, and hand washing are critical. And speaking of masking, this week the CDC published an important study in MMWR evaluating the efficacy of masks in preventing particle dissemination and particle uptake. The focus was on how well masks fit using two strategies double masking with a cloth covering a surgical mask to improve fit, or knotting ear loops of surgical masks to improve tightness. It is important to note that the study did not evaluate or compare to N95s. But the bottom line is combining a cloth mask covering a medical procedure mask, or knotting a medical procedure mask for a better fit, both enhanced protection from particle dissemination and uptake. So the CDC has updated its guidelines to make sure your mask fits snugly against your face through a number of interventions and pick a mask with layers to keep your respiratory droplets in and others out. And finally, our vaccination update. So far, more than 19,000 Duke employees have received the first vaccine dose and more than 14,000 have gotten both. And Duke has vaccinated over 37,000 patients. And on Wednesday, the state of North Carolina announced that the vaccination will start moving into group three, starting with kindergarten through 12th grade teachers and support staff, as well as childcare workers. This begins February 24th. It will not include a broader group of three, including college instructors or support staff at this time. However, beginning March 10th, group three will be expanded to include essential workers who must, must be on site for their work. And this does include a number of areas, including college instructors, food workers, custodians, clergy, law enforcement, and transit workers who will be eligible for vaccination. Duke's COVID vaccination working group is working to determine which Duke faculty and staff may be included in group three. And Duke employee health and wellness will send eligible individuals a direct email invitation for vaccination after the state authorizes the scheduling of appointments. Remember that the state of North Carolina allocates vaccines to providers like Duke, and the supply of vaccines still has been rather limited. Nationally, we're making some progress with the CDC reporting this week that more than 10 million people in the United States have received two doses. I know the pace of the vaccine rollout has been frustrating to all of us, but it's important to remember how far we've come. January marked one year since the first cases of COVID were reported in the U.S., and that does seem like a lifetime ago. But the pace at which these vaccines have been developed safely and administration begun is quite extraordinary. However, the logistics of production, distribution, and vaccination need to be a focus of continued improvement. And that includes more candidate vaccines. So we're anxiously awaiting FDA's review of the J&J &J vaccine we discussed last week. 
Our hope is that everyone can receive a vaccine as fast as possible. I wanna thank everyone for all you're doing to be safe and helping each other. Thank you for joining me again today and have a restful weekend.